This is James Aniston from Through Mist, and you're listening to the Death Blow podcast. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. It's me, Dark Kell, and this is Death Blow Podcast. Subscribe, like, and share my videos, or even go on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and other audio platforms to listen my old episodes. Today, a different kind of episode, and I'm so happy to have the pleasure to have interviewed for the first time a musician for this channel. His band is a one man band, and I will leave you with my first interview for my podcast. It has been a real honor to have talked with the True Miss Only member, but right now, i will leave you with the rest of the interview. Enjoy! Now, Death Blow Podcast, a new special episode right now. We have Jamie from Canada, and it's a pleasure to have you here on my Death Blow Podcast. Awesome, thanks. It's good to be here. It's amazing. So, let's start a bit this interview. So, how you started this project, your band, True Mist? What can you tell so me about it? Yeah, I started it in um, in May 2021. So I was um, I was doing a little bit of like producing and stuff, trying to figure out uh, how to record at home and stuff during the, the pandemic. And uh, when my other band we had uh, we had kind of like taken a little break. So because of that, I said to myself, you know what, I'm gonna try doing uh, doing my own thing, writing a little bit of my own stuff, my own style, and kind of taking it from there and it just slowly uh, slowly grew more and more and uh, now it became uh, a project that like I'm very uh, I'm very invested in time wise and uh, and like thought wise even so like it uh, it takes up a, a lot of free time I'm a musician myself so I understand how it works you know to uh, play uh, the guitar the keyboard in my case I am not a drummer, but uh, mm -hmm. I have difficult times, for example, to uh, record the, the drum parts because uh, I have the software and sometimes it's complicated to deal with that. How do you deal, for example, with the, the drums or with the oh, drums? Yeah, I can't play drums and I don't have the space to record them. So like I do use uh, a drum, uh, like drum software. Yeah. But I, like I write all the drum parts, like I could write them out or if like my drummer from the uh, the other band like uh, has some time, he he writes some of the drum parts for me, and I have like I have um, you know like I use like Easy Drummer or Crim Drums to uh, to kind of get the samples that I want, and I use that. Like I always find a way to humanize it, right? So it has to sound like a person is playing uh, more than anything. So. So, uh, the concept behind, for example, every single album, this uh, would be the next album that you are uh, recording. Is there is something that you're planning or there is something going on? Something yeah, so for, yeah, so for this, uh, this album that's coming out on uh, July 12th, it's um, the second album after I finished, um, finished the, the long storyline that I had uh, throughout all the other albums. So like, from the first single up until, uh, from the first single, which was called Sporogenesis, till the album that came out in December 2023, Summon the Sever. That was all uh, one long storyline. So it was like a concept storyline. Uh, then when I released, like uh, after I finished that, I said to myself, you know what, no more uh, storylines. Let me give myself a little uh, breather from, um, from trying to fit into like one particular like uh, story or idea. So I released um, the previous uh, EP in, um, in, in uh, April, which was prolific. And this next one coming up, uh, it's a full album called Branches. Um, Branches, it's more about like the idea of family, um, how the family changes. Uh, it's about like the, when I found out that my wife was pregnant and my son was gonna be born. Uh -huh. So, it's a lot of um, you know the, the things that happened leading up to like uh, leading up to his birth. You know, like how like I was changing, my wife was changing, the whole family was changing, mm -hmm. and it's our first kid. So, you know, 
it's uh it's a lot of ideas a lot of emotions going through and it's weird because i started through mists like right when um like right when she uh she was uh first like like early on in her pregnancy so it's kind of like it's kind of like um like my kid has grown up at the same time as like i've like uh, made the music so like on my own right so it's kind of like this weird type of uh type of cycle i guess you could say where mm-hmm. <clears throat> been a lot of influence from uh, from my personal life the family that uh, or something that is changing around you it's a form of inspiration and it's a sort of cathartic form that you can bring yeah. out all this energy that you have with this negative energy or this uh, uh, because music is not only an introspection but it's a lot of stuff when you're dealing with a lot of uh, difficulties through life uh, mm-hmm. I, I could understand this for example, depression or anxiety for many people. It is a form of release of this negative energy. So coming yeah. forward to this, uh, uh, this album and stuff, um, so how is developing uh, all of that? Or are you about the projects? What's going on? So uh, right now it's mostly focused on, uh, on promoting uh, branches. Um, I don't like, cause I'm, I'm one guy playing. Like I don't have uh, a rest of the band, so. I don't really play shows or anything like that. I don't go uh, to tours or anything, but I always, uh, you know, I try to stay in touch with uh, the scene here in Montreal. I try to, uh, you know, just kind of like support uh, the other bands too that uh, that are around here that, uh, you know, I've known for a while. And I just kind of try to make my online presence as, uh, as much as I can because, I mean, I'm just one guy, so it's hard to, to go play shows or whatever, but there's going to be lyric videos for uh, for the songs uh, for uh, for branches uh, there's going to be a, a bit more of a media push a bit later and i'm thinking if i could do uh, maybe a music video for one of the songs yeah that's a good project i like to experiment myself with uh, editing so in my case check it out for example my other channel that girl where you can find Something about uh, where people could find you if you have an album, where people could buy this album. Yeah, I have it on uh, on Bandcamp, so it's uh, it's very simple. It's just throughmists.bandcamp.com. It's uh, the album's up there now. It's uh, it's on pre-sale, like pre-order. Uh, it's one of the songs is up there to be listened to from the five, and there's also like. Um, there's like a Spotify save and an Apple Music save that I could send you to uh, to put also. But yeah, the, that's the main place where you can get the album. I also have uh, just all my social media on um, like connected through the Bandcamp. So like Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, um, Threads, and uh, I think that's pretty much it. And I just created uh, an online store for like T-shirts and hoodies. And that too, which is very simple, is just through mists.threadless.com. So. so you started in 2021 this project, a one yeah. man band. How hard is it to be a <laughs> one man band? Well, the good thing is that I don't have anyone to fight with. Um, the, ba- <laughs> the bad thing is I have to do everything myself. So it's, it's good because like, if I have an idea that I like, and I could just, I could just go with it. Uh, the danger is sometimes if I don't have someone to say, listen, maybe you could try playing it a little bit like this, or maybe you could try changing an arrangement or something. It's kind of like, I don't have someone to, to bounce ideas off of. So that's, I think the hardest part is staying like objective. Um, you know, like I'm, I, I write the music that I would listen to or I'd like to listen to. So because of that, like for me, it's like, okay, well, this is, this sounds great, but then I have to take a step back and kind of really listen to it and say, okay, well, maybe we could change this. Maybe we can add something here. Maybe we could take, take uh, something away from this part or whatever. Um, and with a lot of, I, cause I use a lot of instruments. Like I use like obviously guitars, bass, drums, and vocals, but there's also a piano, there's um uh, like keyboards, synthesizers. I use uh, samples every now and then. 
it's a bit of a a bit of a a weird um, I would say like a bit more like avant-garde or proggy because of the other instruments that I use, right? So it's uh, it's all about staying objective. The way like I write usually is I get an idea for um, for some riffs. I write I write them out. Uh, I record them. I make sure that like it's able to be played and it's like uh, it's something cool. And then after that, I add um, the bass on top of that. I try to find some nice bass lines. Then I put the the drums and the other instruments besides the vocals and I have like a demo of it for at least like a month or two and I just listen to it whenever like I'm not listening to something else and I say to myself okay I like this song I don't like this I like this idea and I find like if I didn't do that I would just be writing like releasing like a hundred songs an album because you know like if the ideas come and you like them doesn't mean that they're all necessarily good or or something, right? Like sometimes you have to, to sharpen the pencil a little bit. About the name of the band, the True Miss, mm -hmm. what comes uh, what comes from? So when I started, I wanted to um, I wanted to have an, uh, a name that could be both a little bit uh, vague and also a little bit um, like a little bit mysterious, but at the same time I didn't want to necessarily commit to to want like a name that's like on one type of uh, style or subgenre, right? So I've thought of through mists because when you're looking when you're looking through like when you're looking through mist, you don't always see everything clearly, mm -hmm. um, right? So it's not it's not like a clear vision of what you're seeing, and because of because of that, I said to myself, listen, I'm going to use some experimentation in this. Uh, in this project, I already knew that from, from the beginning. And I thought to myself, listen, what is vague? What can change? What, like when you're looking at something and it can change. So I figured Through Mists is, uh, is a pretty cool name for, for that type of idea behind the band. It's like a mist where life you cannot see very much clearly. Life exactly. So, exactly. so I, I understand because life is a, a sort of strange game, I could say. You don't know yeah. what is coming in your life. Yeah. I totally understand this miss where everything is unclear. It's very incredible. Thank you. What is your uh, form of inspiration? What is your best inspiration? What kind of bands are you inspired? For the bands that like inspire me the most, um... I listen. I'd have to say my favorite band ever, and I don't, I don't care what anyone thinks about this, is In Flames. Yeah. So like old In Flames, new In Flames, like I don't care. In Flames is, is my favorite band uh, of all time. Um, like the old school stuff with the melodies, and it's a bit darker. Even like the new stuff, it's like a little bit more shiny and produced. But for me, like it's, it's my favorite band. So like In Flames is, is up there as far as like musicality and um and like cohesion in, in writing um other bands like um rivers of nile dimu borgir um even like yeah, cradle of filth a little bit too um dark tranquility uh fallujah these these type of bands where they're they have aspects to them that are like melodic but they're heavy and they also have like maybe not necessarily like classical song structure, right? So they're able to to be a bit more out of the box than let's say like verse chorus verse chorus type of songs. And this is um, this is a big part of the inspiration. And like those are my like usually my favorite and go to bands. And I li I listen to a lot of music from a lot of artists out there in in the underground because like. I use with using Bandcamp for myself. I also go and, and I search for other artists, right, who aren't yeah. uh, necessarily like big or, or something like that. So try to get like inspiration from them, see like what makes them tick, maybe get to know them a little bit on social media. Yeah. Those are those are like the main things. Like I have like a couple of bands that uh, I really draw inspiration from. 
because there are a lot of bands that, for example, they prefer to listen to the same classic rock stuff, you know, mm -hmm. with Motorhead, with ACDC. But uh, it's incredible that many people, or many musicians find inspiration even from In Flames and these other bands, that, that Tranquility, that are Swedish uh, yeah. death metal band. And it's interesting to find this, um, the, the scene of the 90s that is more present even nowadays, you know? Uh, yeah, well, like the Arch Enemy also like is a big uh, inspiration for like we used to like me and my and my other bands too, like we would listen to uh, from back in the Johan uh, era days. So like when uh, Johan Leva was in uh, Arch Enemy, like that was like a big like because it was melodic and at the same time like it had this like uh, gritty like a gritty texture to it a little bit the music those first three albums it's like very hard to like reproduce the magic like the three first arch enemy albums and like even uh johan sang for for one of our songs in uh in my old band so wow that was really cool. yeah spectacular. what can you tell me about this collaboration uh well it kind of happened uh, by accident um that this was back in like the myspace days so this was like 2006 or something like that, 2007. And um, like I found him on MySpace and I wasn't sure if it was the real uh, Johan Liva, but we started speaking and like the more we spoke, I was like, okay, no, this is, this is the real guy. And um, one day I just said to him, listen, we're recording an album. We want you to be on a song if, if you want. And he yeah. said, yeah, I sent him the song. He recorded his parts, we sent it back and that was it. Wow, that's fantastic. It's one of yeah. the best things that could happen to a musician, you know, to cooperate with these big musicians. For example, I spoke with uh, Messiah Marcolin, which I talked in uh, the previous episode of that podcast, which you can check it out. It has been very, very good to have spoke with him through Messenger Facebook at the time, where he was, where he was more active there, but not anymore now. Do you want to add something about uh, this uh, interview? You want to yeah. tell him, talk about more? Yeah, basically what like what uh, what I'm looking to uh, to do is just build um, build the name through Mists more and more. Um, I used to release music once a month, but now uh, like now like I figured, listen, it's a bit it's a bit much. So I'm going to be releasing music maybe once every three months or something like that. Maybe once every four months, depending. So instead of doing 12 releases a year, I'm going to be doing uh, maybe three or four releases a year. So this is the second one, Branches. Um, it's coming out July 12th. And it's going to be on all streaming uh, platforms. It's going to be on Bandcamp. It's going to be on YouTube. Um, and you can check me out on all the all the social media links, like uh, Facebook, uh, on Instagram, on Twitter, on uh, on Threads, and uh, to check out the, th the shop for the T-shirts too, which is uh, throughmists.threadless.com. So that's basically it. I mean, uh, I'm an open book. If uh, anyone wants to uh, reach out or or chat or whatever it is, they can give me a shout uh, at any of the social media or with uh, like by email <clears throat> which is through mists at gmail.com and that's it and about the album covers for example because i was mm -hmm. curious about the album covers which uh, is very related to nature and yeah, uh, yeah. what can you tell me about so <clears throat> i use the uh, i use nature i use like the song uh the songs are very much um like I use like a lot of allegory and uh, uh, not simile, but like metaphors in, in the songs. So like when I sing about like the like the forest, it means like it could mean something like the environment that I'm in. It could mean uh, something like how like vast and like big the world around us is. When I like when I sing about uh, the ocean. It could be something that's like dark, scary, a lot of unknown, a lot of um, a lot of chaos because you know anything can happen in open water. Um, and usually, like with the imagery with uh, with the animals, they represent 
like a certain type of um, a certain type of like influence in my life or a certain type of relationship. Like with uh, the different types of birds, they're they're different type of um, maybe people that were mentors to me in my life earlier on. Like the octopus represents like uh, the octopus actually represents like a bit of um, depression. Um, the hamsters are just uh, are just cycles, you know. So I try to use uh, I try to take like the imagery of nature, um, twist it a little bit into um, into the imagery I want to portray as an artist, and I relate that back to uh, through the lyrics uh, in my music. It's incredible to even have this allegory to define the octopus, depression, and stuff. I find it very inspiring and even uh, very good uh, as a structure to to talk about uh, important topics like this mental health and uh, or even uh, depression and insecurities. It's really, really, really important to to talk about and. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, I said <laughs> almost everything, but uh, if you want to tell more, you have the space here to to tell and to add whatever you want to add. So I think uh, I think like if the biggest thing I could I could put out and like without like taking like an hour to talk about it is like the um, the, the storyline that I had previously. It's all like one big uh, like one big connection from when I left because I took a, a sabbatical from music for like almost like eight years ten years something like that um, and it's kind of like continuing from when I took my sabbatical to right uh, right before the pandemic actually so it's a bit uh, anything you need to know about me you could find out like through through all those songs and obviously like the more songs that come out there's going to be a lot more stuff too like it's it's very personal lyrics some of the stuff is a bit uh, abstract but uh, there's very little I've I've kept uh, I've kept hidden but it's in, it's in like coded like coded messages and stuff like that that you could read it's all about um, it's all about the way I've processed or experienced things that that I've lived through yeah. That's kind of that's kind of what what a lot of the the lyrics are about. Yeah, that, that's interesting. What can I say more than to thank you to have participated to to this place and uh, check it out, guys. The True Mist on the Bandcamp.com and uh, through Spotify and other platforms, Instagram and Twitter. So for every single thing you can ask, they have even merchandise, so you can order stuff from this site. I will put under the description of this video, you can find everything related to this band. So what can I say more? Thank you, Jimmy, Deathlo Podcast, subscribe, like and share, whatever you have the chance to people. Yeah. And um, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much. And uh, Thank you so much. It's amazing, thank you.